Hello there. Uh, we have AutoCAD 2025 out now. I just wanted to look at a few of the features I think are, are quite useful. Just a very brief introduction, to be honest. Um, one of those is the um, activity insights that we spoke about last year, actually. So if I look at my view here, view tab, we can go to my activity insights there. Here it is. So the activity insights is, has been improved uh, quite a bit. There's a few features in here that I quite like. One of them to be particular is the um, version compare here. So, for example, if I click on the compare here, this one, compare version one. So what I've done here is I've saved this uh, a few times, made it demo, demo changes. And also I've saved it to a Google Drive, you know, a, a cloud-based uh, drive. So that allows me to click on the compare here. So if I went back to uh, my version one here, you can see that there was a circle I put just there in my version one. If I move out of that one now, come up to my version two, you can see that another circle there, but then the, the earlier one is in there this type of thing, which is quite nice. So if I come up to my version three, you can see it was changed. Uh, I saved, but nothing was really changed there. I close that. And then if I look at the last version here, version four, you'll see that it says there's no differences were found between the two drawings. So which basically means that I don't really have any changes. So I can look at the history of of my uh, saves here through that compare. So there we go. We've got some nice uh, features there in the activity types there. So the, another area I quite like in here, I just closed the activity insights here. One of the aspects I, I'm actually quite pleased with, with the, the way that AutoCAD 2025 has done, is that, for example, I've got some geometry here. These these are just, like I say, circle and, uh, and an ellipse. It's, it's actually just two ellipses there, basically representing a chair. Now, this, this could be um, copied geometry. It could be cut and paste geometry. But what I wanted to do is utilize this new feature here called block uh, convert. So b b convert as a as a command. I can use that here, and it says select objects to convert to blocks. So if I select this one and this one and press enter, you see that the machine learning sees that I've got actually quite a few similar pieces of geometry together. So like I said, if you've been cut and pasting and just a lot of copying data, this will really collect it up into a block. So I, I press the enter here. I've got actually 17 total here. So I just press the enter and that brings up this little command here. So for example, I can, I can convert to an existing block or make a new block here. Give it a name, for example. Uh, this is my comfy chair, for example, um, you know, this, this, this um, will convert all of those instances now to convert all 17 to a block. So I quite like that now. So that becomes a block reference. And like I said, if you've been working with this for uh, a while, uh, if you've been working on drawing for a while and you've been doing a lot of cut and paste and moves and, uh, and copies and stuff like that, then this this would be very useful. The other one of the other aspects I do like about the way we've moved we're moving forward with uh, 2025, and one of them is the block. Uh, sorry, the uh, I've done the block there. The um, hatching. If I click on hatch here, and um, let's pay. Let's I pick up. I don't know, concrete hatch there, something that gives me some information here that I've got a scale there. If I created a hatch here now, I can use pick internal objects, select objects, rectangular circle, this type of thing. So I can, I can create, um, let's go back to the original mode there. I can create 
a hatch here um, with a rectangle in it, this type of thing. So there we've got a hatch here under a rectangle, but I haven't got the rectangle, so it's not as if we've been saving a rectangle. So we, the, the new features in here now mean that I can actually have, um, I can draw my lines in like this and enter, and then I've got a hatch pattern like that. I think this is quite useful. So for example, if I was doing this area in here, for example, I, I could indeed sort of think, well, actually, I'm going to just use the hatch pattern here, and I'm just going to snap all the way around here like this, like this. So we can do a very quick hatch. So I can do the entire hatch um, straight away like that. I like, I quite like that. That's actually quite, quite a nice process, I must admit. Now, one of the other areas that I'm keen to show you here, um, and it's really, if I just, even if I just started up a new, a new little project here, just a simple ACAD ISO there. Um, a lot of uh, colleagues working in uh, in uh, clients working in in GIS data and stuff like that will come across this our uh, concept here of setting location and this. Now we do have we can uh, go from Bing Maps, uh, but now we can actually go to Esri Maps here. So we can actually start to look at the Esri Map design. So for example, if I uh, I've typed in my location here, say Cuffley, where our, our office is, for example. Here it is, uh, Cuffley here, um, set marker here, for example. I could place my elevation, the usual sort of stuff here, click on next. And we'll see that this will consider, uh, now it will consider the GIS coordinate system, um, so whatever we want to do, if I come down here, British National Grid, for example, sometimes people will use that. That's fine for this exercise. But of course, there's a lot of them here, depending on your particular disciplines. Click on next here. And then I can place that in here. So if I go zero, um, comma zero, just to pop that map straight in here. Um, here we have the map here put in straight away. So, I could actually start to work with this uh, directly now, which is really nice. And what's good about this, if we've got, as we've got Esri imagery here, I can use uh, as, as Esri imagery, streets, light gray, Esri dark gray, um, and so on. So for example, I could put this, use, utilize this as my um, background and so on. So I like, I quite like that. That's actually quite nice. I've worked with that a little bit now, um, experimenting with it, and I think it's actually quite good. So that, that little feature is actually quite good as well. One of the last ones I do, I actually quite like, the, the actually the last one I like is actually the, if we go to the graphics, config here um, and then we get the, the normal dialog box up for graphics config the reason why i wanted to flag this one up is it, it's sort of hidden away in 2025 a little bit in that a lot of people are not realizing that we do actually have a diagnostic here so sometimes you might find that when you're working uh, with your uh, CAD drawings particularly in 3d and if you're doing any sort of uh, shader development on here. For example, if I come back to here, you've got material effects and what they call fong lighting in here. So if you're moving towards higher end visual um, aspects, it's a good idea to jump through the little diagnostics in here. 
So if we're using a hardware acceleration, if that's okay, the graphics card driver, particularly that one, very often when I'm working with our clients and our in in and uh, in our training, and it's really dependent upon graphics drivers now. So the graphic driver is here, and also if your GPU can um, convert to a DirectX 12, that will be listed here. And then if you've already got an automatic configuration, it will be, it will be shown here. Now, this particular one, like I say, it's hidden away a little bit, but I do think that that's a quite a nice little uh, feature, to be honest, in, in our 2025. So in, in essence, I think there's some really good features coming in in 2025. I personally like the way that the, the features I spoke about in 2024 have sort of moved forward and been honed and tuned a bit now in 2025. Um, for example, the, um, the, uh, activity insights and the trace, for example, the trace tool that I spoke about last, last time, much the same. Few features have changed on it. And one of them is that we can now edit XREF in the trace, which is quite nice. So there you go. These are some of the nice new features in 2025. And uh, see you again soon.